Could it be 2022 is upon us? And how will 2022 be better than 2021? It won't take much to prove that. Welcome to the Lance One Hour Show Live, and we are here with a New Year's uh, excitement and uh, coming in from around the world, zooming in on our studio here in Dallas, Texas, the epicenter of the, the I guess it's the, uh, the, the great pushback in the, in, the, in the nation, of course, Florida and Texas are the two states that everybody really is moving into. I mean, they're coming in. By the way, somebody just moved in. Oh, it's, it's not Wolfgang Puck, but it's some famous chef from California who had the TV show on like, you know, then they were, I didn't watch it, but it's like the chef competition and that, all that oh, stuff. What's Bobby his name? Flay? Nah, somebody else. Uh, the audience is writing it down right now on Facebook and on YouTube. Oh. And uh, what, what, what's his name, Jonathan? Who is he? No, Gordon lives in London. Gordon moved here. Moving here to Texas. I'm going to Google it now. Keep going, Phil, and I'll find the I answer. I was told he's leaving California to come to Texas. That's what I was told. Wow. But like so many other people, like Elon Musk, like Joe Rogan, like um, Ben Shapiro didn't do. <laughs> he moved to Nashville. All right, so listen. It is Gordon. You're, you're acting surprised that I got it right. No, not you, Jonathan, because oh, I thought he Jonathan. lived in London with his family. He probably has multiple homes. But yeah, he's moving his restaurant headquarters to Texas. That's what it is. That's what I'm talking about, people. So mm -hmm. listen, it, this is the new year moment. It's a good time. To, to reset the, I think it's the, the Hebrew year 5782, mm -hmm. um, which we only know because by coincidence, it happens to correspond to the Hebrew Strong's Concordance. Did you know the Strong Concordance has numbers, four digit numbers and three digit numbers? <laughs> and that 5782 in the Hebrew Concordance is. Go ahead, Mercedes. You're laughing. No, oh. I just think it's fine. It's fine. I knew this before you before you told me. I knew. No, I've been banging this drum since before the Jewish New Year that 5782, like you said, in the strong concordance is actually the word er for awakening. And so it's just great. You know, it happens all the time. I know a lot of people don't get the window into uh, what it's like working with you, but you have a great idea, and then all of a sudden Lance has a really great idea that's almost identical to your idea, and you're like, yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> Let's go with that idea. Well, the, the, the fact of the matter is when, when we wrote, when I was writing about what's going to be happening in this season, which is really, it's a prophecy for, I'd say, the decade. That was the last book we wrote. It's like a decade prophetic. And I said that the, the key chapter is going to be two chapters in the Bible mm. in the little-known prophet named Haggai. And Haggai, the prophet during the era of Cyrus, spoke to the Jewish people that had returned to Jerusalem to rebuild their temple. And he's, the Lord said, I'm shaking the heavens and the earth. I'm shaking the sea and the dry land. And so suddenly you run into this, um, this, this unique prophecy that describes global shaking and overturning of nations during the period of Cyrus and... The prophecies occur during the Feast of Tabernacles, the month of Tabernacles. So it's all pregnant with end time significance. But the word of the Lord that came by Haggai was that, that the reason why these devastations were coming upon the people that were returning to Jerusalem after their 70 years of captivity in Babylon was, uh, it was because they weren't building what God wanted them to build. They weren't, the church wasn't on God's building project. They were on their own. And so the Lord said, I'm basically putting a, uh, I'm shutting you all down. I'm shutting the nations down and I'm shaking everything. It sounds so much like what's going on with this COVID situation. And America uh, is the preeminent Gentile nation. Mm. And uh, Jesus did say that Jerusalem be trodden under the foot of men until, until uh, the time of the Gentiles is... Um, coming to an end, and then, uh, and really in 1967, as Jerusalem came back into the orbit of the state of Israel and the Jewish people, that was the fulfillment of a prophetic timeline when Jesus said, now, now we enter the decline of the Gentile era. I remember Pat Robertson years ago, year 2000, he wrote, going into the new millennium, 
the United States is the top of the pyramid of Gentile nations. We are the global economic power with banking. We're the global military power projecting our system of law um, in, in terms of contractual. Everyone has to work with the American and Western idea of contractual relationship, rule of law. And basically, America projected its Gentile power dominance up until the period in which our um, Cyrus, Trump, was removed from office, and I think lawlessly removed, mm -hmm. at which point the spirit of lawlessness and Antichrist, which is the spirit of lawlessness, according to First Thessalonians, the spirit of Antichrist is lawlessness, that we're going to the last days. And with that comes the decline of the Gentile power of America. We were there in 1967, and it looks like in, you know, uh, it looks like our, our decline uh, has, has begun now. Will that decline be checked? Will there be recovery? Will there be a, a period of, as I'm going to go in today in the broadcast, predictions? It's time for some prophetic predictions, people. Uh, I believe that God is going to extend the period of grace on America. It's almost like if you remember Joshua being in a battle uh, and, and he was uh, dealing with enemies, and as the day went on, Joshua needed more time in order to defeat the enemies. And so rather than the sun going down, he called out for the sun to stand still over the valley. Mm. And the Lord held the sun in place. You could, it's, it's as though the rotation of the earth was stopped for a critical period of time for an hour or two so that Joshua was given the extension of time needed to deal with the enemy. I think that America is, in 2022, going to experience the battle at the gates of influence because hell is occupying media, and hell is occupying academia, and hell is occupying the Justice Department, the political uh, mechanisms in America. Sorry to say, it's becoming a woke military. Hell has moved into Wall Street's corporate suites, Hell has moved into Hollywood, and what God is doing is he's raising up competing structures, which is what Martin Luther did, the Reformation. If a mountain will not change, if it will not respond, then God has a way of dealing with it, and the way that God deals with the mountain is he raises up another mountain against it. Hmm. So Martin Luther became the religious movement that would deal with the reluctant medieval Catholicism that wouldn't reform. Remembering, Martin Luther was a priest. He wasn't a Lutheran. He was a priest. He wanted reformation in the Catholic Church. Since they wouldn't respond, God raised up a competing system. What you see with Getter, what you see with Gab, what you see with Rumble, what you see... And admittedly, these are humble beginnings, but it's just like in the Bible. It says, you know, those that remember the old structure and see the new one, you know, they wept when they saw the... But nevertheless, listen, you, you know, you don't need a whole lot when you're a movement. You just need to have communication. And so if you've got communication, the movement has power. Mm -hmm. So we're, fine, we're creating our own institutions to go up against the institutions. Or you could say... God is raising up competing spheres for the spheres that will not change. The mountain that won't move will be forced to move by the presence of another mountain. Love that. The populist movement is going to become the, the, the mountain within the mountain of government that is going to reshape both Republicans and Democrats. I think it goes back to another prediction. It goes back to what Kim Clement said. He said, uh, the Lord says, I am dissatisfied with both parties. And what I'm doing uh, will not be, uh, the, the Democrats won't like it and the Republicans won't like it. Well, Donald Trump wasn't liked by either party. He was the populist that ran as a Republican, but the Republicans didn't endorse him. They reluctantly were forced to embrace what we did. The populist movement did it. Hmm. And so you're going to see the mountain of government shake because the populist movement will be the new competing sphere or mountain within the mountain of government. It's going to be a firewall to the progression of the left. This is how God's going to hold the sun over the valley of Megiddo, I think it was, and it's going to give Joshua extended time to deal with his enemies. Otherwise, America would be going down 
But God's going to give us some extended mercy and grace here. And so, but we've got to deal with our enemies. That's what we're doing in that extended time. It's not sit back and twiddle your thumbs and, and watch God, you know, mm. eat, you know, eat, eat cake or something and, and be a spectator. You actually are going to be the involved activist. Yep. So I'm seeing in social media, there's going to be the raising up of other, we see it like to an extent with Flashpoint. We see it with Real America's Voice, Steve Bannon's War Room. We see it with mm. our, our podcast. So we're seeing alternative systems or, or spheres or mountains coming against the mountain that will not move. God will make it move. Hmm. And so what happens is gates of influence are on top of these mountains. That's remnant leadership. God raises up new leaders. He raises up new gatekeepers. And so uh, this is all biblical. So when David was going up uh, to take Jerusalem, it was the Jebusites occupied the high places and they mocked him. And they said, if so much as a fox comes up here, you know, it'll, 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 you know, it'll collapse or something yeah. like that. But um, the reality is that David uh, succeeded. And it's ironic that was fox was the word that was used because right now, Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson are, are on the Fox network, the two dominant, uh, Tucker particularly, the two dominant voices in broadcast ratings. And he's on fire like a reformer. So what I'm saying is you're going to see the populist movement uh, retaking ground, and in all seven mountains, you're going to see a pushback on, on the woke, corrupt, virus-ridden condition of America, which comes about because of false doctrine, false theology, authorizing false spirits, demons, to take over the high places. So the gatekeepers occupy the gates, human gatekeepers, under the influence of demons and principalities, they occupy academia, they occupy Wall Street, they occupy arts, they occupy media, and God's bringing the battering ram down, bam, 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 to push back. You're seeing it through the uh, school boards. It's happening not on the universities, but it's happening in the local schools, such as in um, in uh, what we saw with the, in, in you know, Lytton County, Virginia, and yeah. what's going on. By midterms, it will be a prairie fire the left will be freaking out over because it's grassroots. That's what populism is. What I'm describing has this biblical model behind it. Mm -hmm. When Elisha did his final act, a certain king came to him when Elisha was about to die, and he said, I, I, you know, he really needed the prophet's intervention for the country, and what are they going to do when you go? And so the, um, the king was told by one great act of the prophet to take his arrows and fire an arrow to the window facing the east. And so the king shot the arrow. And then the old prophet propped himself up and said, now take the arrows and smite the ground. And the king went three times. And the prophet was furious. The king goes... I don't get it. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. And you're mad at me for some abstract act, like hitting mm -hmm. something. He goes, you don't understand. What you did was an extension of a prophetic act. It reveals something about your condition. You only smote the ground three times. Therefore, you'll have three years of victory in battle. If you had smote the ground five or six times, you would have obliterated your enemies. I'm saying that God wow. is giving us an extension of grace so that we can strike the arrow five or six times. Mm. But that doesn't mean we will. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean, I think we only, I wrote this in 2016. I said, my biggest concern with Donald Trump is that God will provide an intervention for America and that the church will be so lackluster, flat-footed and incoherent in its response that the man will have three years. And sure enough, he had three years, and the final year and a half was under two impeachment scenarios yeah. and an investigation for Russia. He was he was hogtied after midterms. We we boop, boop, boop. We, we barely squeaked that out. So I felt like we did not have the degree of unity requisite to be able to push. Remember, 60-some percent of Americans self-identify as Christians. Mm. I'm always confused as to how many that represents, but 40% of the voting Republican Party are Christians. Wow. It's a disgrace that we are ignored, our interests are ignored, and we have no access. Apart from Donald Trump, evangelicals are almost half the party, and they're treated with scorn as though we're deplorable, 
Walmart ignoramuses by the elites like McConnell. Mm -hmm. And I think even the McCarthy's and the other guys that are the Washington Republicans. Mm. But um, nevertheless, I'm telling you that God is giving us the opportunity for hitting back in academia, hitting back in media. And I, and I see this as, as the lawlessness is in your face this year. That is, mm -hmm. this, that is, yeah, you're absolutely right. As the left states, which is the another thing, sheep and goat nations. Yeah. People are on me. They're fighting me on sheep and goat nations. Let them fight. I'm right. And the proof of it is it's in your face right now. 100%. Sheep and goat territories exist in America. There's sheep cities and sanctuary cities for the devil, and they're becoming sanctuary cities for the righteous. Mm -hmm. And they're in the red states and the reddest of the red states where the church is evidently prevailing in the heavenlies is Florida and uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. And then you're seeing a shift happening in Colorado right now. They were mm. red and then they went blue mm. and now they're in purple zone. Mm. There's a battle to recover. The church is awakening there. Wow. Well, so I want to chime in. I have a couple different thoughts, but I wanted to pivot back into the 5782. So just hang with me and then I want to see what you think of this wait, interpretation. So wait a second. I, I just got to say what? something because I, I, I missed something here on the clock. This is important. We're going to talk about this. 5782, the prophetic year. But um, who, who do we work with with the gold uh, report? Birch gold. Birch gold. I want you guys, because I'm thinking about this. I'm looking at, I'm reading this uh, financial study that we were doing here on a program about um, how much gold you ought to have. Because the Haggai, the prophet, said the silver is mine and the gold is mine. I really believe that there's, that, that God has given a prophetic something in the Bible to talk to us about land about like the meek shall inherit the earth. I'm just having a renaissance or an awakening, how real estate, people that are actually buying the land and occupying the land because there's something about land and territory mm -hmm. and righteousness that I'm seeing where there's windows of investment for those people in real estate. There's windows of investment for people in gold and silver and, and precious metals. But I want you to go to get a hold of the lancewellnot.com forward slash birch, lancewalnut.com forward slash birch, and download like the 20 or 30 page report they've got um, on gold, because not all gold is the same. I mean, I have friends of mine that have gold certificates, like I've got, you know, uh, what did I buy, which was, you know, we, we're, it was Iraqi dinars, oh, and like I got all this useless Iraqi dinar paper, and uh, until I talked to a banker, a Christian spirit-filled banker um, in Abu Dhabi, who was laughing and telling me that all you Christians that are buying these Iraqi dinars, do you understand that every currency is pegged to other currencies? There will never be one currency suddenly like a, a super high-tech stock breakthrough. Hmm. Anyway, we've done this stuff. You don't want to invest off of a prophecy. You, you want to invest with wisdom. By wisdom, wealth is built. So um, prophetically, you want to find out where the wisdom of God is. Go to that uh, lancewellnut.com forward slash birch and start to study about gold and silver. And we're going to talk more about that in other broadcasts and real estate. And I don't know why you're laughing. Because I got a joke for you, okay? Oh. I heard it last night. Hey, you know, what's the difference between um, the people in Dubai and the people in Abu oh, Dhabi? This is so funny. I was laughing. You said that you sent it to me. And I, you said I don't, I don't open your TikTok, but I, I read it. I okay. know what. So what's right. the difference between the people in, in so Dubai and Abu Dhabi? What is the difference between the people in Dubai and the people in Abu Dhabi? The people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> the people in Abu Dhabi do. It's so like I think it's a dad joke. It's I'll such be, a dad know. joke. It's for our friend that lives in Abu Dhabi. I want to take this moment, maybe it's a natural time to just like take a, a segue into um, to getting ready for tomorrow's broadcast because we're about to open up something, which is the new year, 5782, it's the Hebrew year. There are different uh, prophets. Remember, Bob Jones would do this thing. Chuck Pierce does this. And I got stuck one year filling in for Chuck Pierce. He didn't show up in Jerusalem for an uh, event. And I remember uh, it was uh, Tom Hess called me up. He said, could you fill in for Chuck tonight? I was about to fly out of Jerusalem. I said, well, okay. He said, well, I need you to do something. He, everyone's coming to hear him talk about the new year. Guess what year it was? 5777. This was the year Trump was running for president. Hmm. And I said, I don't do that. That's, uh, I, don't do the, I don't do the number thing. I mean, you know, I get words on what's coming. He said, well, 
whether you're ready or not, they're coming for that. You can preach whatever you want. So I get on my knees and I go, Lord, I got a fill in for Chuck Pierce. I don't even do this. 5777. This is Rosh Hashanah, the new year. And the 777 means that I'm going to perfect my purpose this year for your country. And this is right, right, I kid you not, as the, um, the Hollywood Access video came out and, and Donald Trump was so, so, everyone thought he was going to just like totally lose it. He's going to, no, America would never forgive him for the Access Hollywood video and all that stuff he did. But it was 5777. I went and preached that word that night and it started me off on looking at the Hebrew years differently, the way these other, other prophets do. And tomorrow, Mercedes will kick us off on the meaning of 5782, what the new year tells us. And so you don't want to miss tomorrow. It's the prophetic code to unlocking the vault of God's purpose in 2022.